And okay, we're ready. We're ready. If you put, yeah, and if you put everybody, if you put it on speaker view, uh, you will probably be able to see uh, Chef Dan a little bit better than if it's in the grid. We'll also spotlight him just in case. And that's it. All right, go ahead. Hey guys, my name is Dan Hollywood. I'm the executive chef here at Nantasket Flats, as well as the Jetty down in Marchfield, our sister restaurant. Um, wanted to invite you in, kind of see what we do a little bit. Wanted to show you a couple of our seasonal appetizers that become pretty well known for. Uh, the first one we're going to do is a char grilled New Orleans style uh, oyster on the half shell. And the second one's going to be our lobster nacho. Um, first one for our char grilled oyster. First thing we're going to start with is we take about a pound of butter, three or four cloves of garlic, smash them down on your cotton board, um, and a pinch of fresh oregano into uh, a pan, super low heat for 15 to 20 minutes until your garlic softens, then you'll be ready to go. Now what we're using for an oyster today are these beautiful, absolutely stunning uh, Duxbury Bay XL third generation oyster. Uh, the reason we wanna use a, a bigger, an older third generation oyster is that the shell is much, much thicker. If you're trying to char grill an oyster at six or 700 degrees, 550 at the minimum, your shells are gonna explode if you're using some of the smaller ones. So we choose to use a much bigger one. They're gonna go right onto the grill, nice hot spot on the grill. And we're just gonna kind of let them sit there for a minute. They don't need a, don't need a ton of time, but you definitely wanna get them on there. You'll start hearing the shells cracking a little bit. The edges of your oysters will start to turn in a little bit once they start to get cooked up to the level we want them. The great part about this is you can do these for 30 seconds or 20 minutes. Some people like the cheese a little more melted. They like it a little crispy, a little crunchy. Um, anywhere from five minutes to 15 minutes can really work on those. So once those are down, the next thing we do, we're gonna take great piece of our nice country white bread from Lamarca Bakers. And we're gonna put that on our press. Uh, just kind of get some bread going. We use the garlic butter uh, and it stays in the shell really well. So that bread's a nice little treat at the end to be able to soak up all the extra stuff that you got on your grill. So first time through, we're gonna do this a couple of times. First time through, just kind of hit the shell lightly with your oyster butter. It's gonna flare up a little bit, which you want. That'll start getting the snapping and crackling. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's, if you guys could smell this through the computer, it's amazing. You get that really nice garlicky smell. The fresh oregano also puts off a scent that's really distinct and really nice. So we got those started. They're going nice. We're gonna check our bread, make sure it's good. Yep, toasting right up for us. Rotate these around a little bit, give them all a shot on the real hot spots of the grill. Now's when the fun happens. Now this is all about the flame. We're gonna take some of our garlic butter and we're just gonna be really liberal. We want lots of flames for this. Really liberal. Next up, we're gonna grab our Parmigiano Reggiano. Right over the top. Let's let the fire do the work. Nice heavy coating of the Parmigiano Reggiano. Let them snap and crackle. You can hear the shells going. That's my favorite part of this. Uh, you see the butter boiling. It's starting to get a little browning on the shell. Oh, there goes the shell right there, just flew by. Me. So to plate these up, we take a long bakery tray. We line it with our mixed greens. Like I said, a couple of minutes, right on to our tray. Still got one on fire there, two. Get our bread off from the toaster. Slice it up nice and pretty. Back it right here in the corner. A little more fresh Parmesan over the top. And just for fun, we're gonna give it another little scoop of our oyster butter right over top. That grilled bread soaks it up nice and good when you're all done. There you have it. That's our New Orleans style char grilled oysters.
They're delicious. You're going to love them. Next up, we're doing a signature dish of ours, which is our lobster nacho. Um, our lobster nachos, we do primarily during the summer. Um, and the way we do it, we don't necessarily do a cheese sauce or any of that. What we do is we take and we make a lobster cream. So we cook our lobsters, we break them down, we pick the bodies, all the shells and bodies then go back into the boiling water uh, for about four hours, uh, somewhere three to four hours at a high simmer, not quite a boil. Once that's done, you take it and strain it out. Then we take that, we take one quart of our lobster stock that we just made, mix it with one cup of cream and a quarter cup of sherry, put that on the stovetop on low heat. You wanna simmer that and reduce it by half. That way you're getting a little bit of, of consistency. Not, it's not very runny. Um, and it's a great lobster cream. Finish it off with a little bit of grated Parmesan and a little bit of mozzarella. So we do ours in a paint can, which we think is a pretty neat presentation. And it's a pretty neat setup. So paint, nacho, uh, paint can goes down, some fresh fried tortilla chips. You want to give them a little bit of a pack in there. Some of that beautiful lobster cream right on top. Going to follow that up with some fresh pico de gallo. And then some fresh butter poached lobster. You can't see it. This is, uh, we just poached that this morning. Fresh butter poached lobster. Going to go right on top of the tortilla chips and the pico de gallo. Now I have a pet peeve and my pet peeve is when I get my nachos, which I do get a lot of nachos, and they're just a bunch of chips thrown on with some cheese and pico over the top. We try not to do that. We layer these. So you get three layers that are just the same. Right into your paint can. Give it a little push, set it in. Again, with the lobster cream. Again, with the pico de gallo. And again with your lobster. Lots of lobster in these. Uh, per order here at the flats, what we do is we don't weigh it out. We take a lobster and we break it down and we put it in a bag. So with every single order of lobster nachos here, you get two tails, two claws, two knuckles, and two body pickings. Uh, really nice setup on a nacho. Finally, on for our last layer. A few more chips on the top. Back them in a little bit. Lobster cream coming right in. Fresh pico de gallo. Last layer also gets a little bit of our fresh homemade guacamole. The last of our two lobsters. Right over the top. And then what we call jalapeno fries. These are nice thin strips of fresh jalapeno, freshly seeded, ready to go. Uh, taking the seeds out takes quite a bit of the heat away, which we found most, most of our folks seem to like. Last thing on these, kind of crazy, but you're gonna take them and give them a whack. Just like so, when they come to the table, drop them off like so, the server picks them up, and you have this beautiful tower of nachos ready for you to eat. Beautiful, who wouldn't wanna have that? So that's gonna kinda of take care of our kitchen portion of it. I'm gonna take you for a little walk through the restaurant. So this is our main dining area. Uh, we are located at 145 Nantasket Avenue in Hull. Our main dining room downstairs, uh, our bar area, full bar setup, um, 15 beers on draft, great room down here. Let's, let's head outside and check out the patio.
Sorry about the brightness, folks. <laughs> we'll see if we can keep it in the shade a little bit, but I doubt we're going to be able to. This is our outdoor patio area. It's uh, branded as Bar Playa. We really are taking on a tacos and tequila theme out here all summer. Obviously, look at the view. You're looking at it, you got the shipping channel, the ships headed across. We're right on the ocean. Beautiful view, beautiful day. Uh, and this is the place this summer for tacos and tequila all summer long. Uh, and we call it Bar Playa at Nantasket Flats. Beautiful, beautiful place. There's a fireplace over there if you can't see it. We have heaters set up so that if the weather's not perfect, you can still eat outside. And we're finding anytime it's above 45 or 50 degrees, we got a pretty full patio these days. Just gorgeous. Couldn't ask for a better day. Let's go upstairs so Dave can show you some drinks. If anybody has questions, feel free to raise your hand or um, put it in the chat. Once we're settled, we'll start asking the question too. I know there was one about um, healthy bread options, when, which is interesting, Angela, because there was a pound and a half of butter used. So we'll see what he has to say. Um, she wanted to know, could you really use any kind of different, healthier bread, a gluten-free bread or anything like that? Be fine, yep. right? We've yeah. used gluten-free, we've used a sweet potato bread. Uh, you can use just about anything. The absorption is what's key, and just about any bread is going to be able to absorb what you got. Okay, great. Thanks. Yep. So this is our upstairs room. Great room for functions. Um, we have a lot of big parties, big groups up here. During the summer, now that we're finally coming out of COVID, hopefully we'll be able to have some live entertainment upstairs. Beautiful view of the ocean from upstairs, separate bar, pool table, bowling game, a little bit of everything up here. Uh, probably, in my estimation, the best room on the South Shore. Chef Dan, can I ask a question? Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about your background and kind of where did you come across the charbroiled oysters? Like, how did that oh. come into your repertoire? <laughs> They, they, they actually came from our owner. He went to New Orleans a few years okay. ago and said, you got to try this. So we kept playing around with it until we got it to where we liked it. Uh, my background, uh, I went to um, New England Culinary Institute in Burlington, Vermont. Um, from there, I was in Paris for three and a half, almost four years. Um, and then I kind of made my way up the East Coast. I was in Myrtle Beach for a while. I was in Tampa for about six years. And then I was in Maine and then Boston. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Chef, do you have a particular dish you love to cook? Is there something that really is your favorite thing to do? Oh, muted. You were muted. Muted. Hey, you guys are muted. Yeah. How about now? Yeah, sorry, you were muted the whole time. So I don't know if you <laughs> answered the question or not, but. <laughs> yeah, I, I heard the question. My, fav my personal favorite dish is corned beef. Um, given my Irish heritage, I, I enjoy the whole process of it, getting in a beef brisket, pickling it, brining it, smoking it, and then ultimately roasting it. Um, so yeah, if I had a favorite dish, it would be corned beef. And we do a, an Irish egg roll here that's, that's really good. We use our house corned beef, uh, aged cheddar cheese. We roll that up in a flour tortilla and serve it with an IPA honey mustard for dipping which is probably my favorite dish. So we're gonna pass it over to Dave here real quick. We'll do some more questions if we have them at the end. Dave Fryer is our bar manager here. All you, Dave. Good morning, folks. How are we doing today? Today we have a, uh, it's called a rum swizzle. This was uh, pretty much created by our GM. He is uh, from the island. So um, it's a little rum um, drink. 
which you see we pour that out it's a nice color it, it, it pairs up great with pretty much anything chef dan comes up with a uh, nice flavor like on the beach island flavor and this was called the rub squizzle next we have our uh, just our house, our house tequila which is um Mumazul, obviously. Um, this is the owner is um, he created obviously um, Jose Cuervo. So this it's this a house made margarita. This house margarita obviously will pair up with our oysters, with the nachos, with pretty much anything that we have. It's a nice, 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 refreshing um, tequila drink, especially when you're on the beach. And this right here, this lovely junk thing right here, this is, if you if you all can see that, this we can make pretty much, we, we can make a sangria, white sangria, red sangria, any 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 particular drink. And this is called the fish bowl. So it's, it's a two person drink. Obviously one person cannot drink that by themselves. So, this is a two person drink. And that is, we use a little bit of Gosling's rum, a little bit of blue chair, white rum, a little bit of pineapple juice, a little bit of orange juice, uh, a little bit of bitters and filled with ice. That's pretty much it. And also when you come on a Sunday, we have our um, mimosa tray. Mimosas, you can get um, pretty much any mimosa, any flavor you, any flavor you want, and it comes exactly like this, right on the beach. Cool. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. We lost your video. Can I just look to see? I think it's because she's getting a call. I think we, I think we got it. We're back. Yes. Thank you. Right, uh, somebody asked what was in the rum swizzle. Rum swizzle. What's the recipe, Dave? Rum swizzle is going to be Gosling's rum, white cheer, white rum, orange juice, pineapple juice, grenadine. And that's what we call it. Delicious. It is, too. It is delicious. If you can taste it, it'll be good, but too bad you can't. <laughs> Maybe we will. Maybe we'll yeah. all, we'll be down and get some. Yes, absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna put everybody in gallery view again. So if you have a question, raise your hand. I'll unmute you. Feel free to ask anything you'd like. Um, and then let's see. Anybody? Question? Peter. Am I unmuted? No, yeah, you're good. Go uh, I can hear you. So a uh, couple of questions. Uh, Dave, what is your food and drink background? And Dan, you seem unusually comfortable and natural in front of a camera doing this. Have you done instructions for classes before or do you just do a lot of live uh, tape video stuff like this? Uh, in Maine as well as in Myrtle Beach. Uh, and in Tampa, we used to do a date night class, which was a very similar thing. It was a subscription service. And once a month we would, it was hugely male driven at that point, but once a month we would try and have a class to teach someone to, to cook for their date for the night. So I've done this a fair amount, yes. Myself, I've been um, in this industry for quite some time, West Coast, East Coast. Um, I've managed a few places in Arizona, here, and um, just came to a great team here. So. We're gonna we're gonna flow with this. So, did you come here because of the uh, food and uh, the job opportunity in the food, or were you already here? And what made you relocate out here? Yes, yeah, so I actually was already involved in the food industry prior to this, but um, a good friend of mine who is the GM here now just told me that this place was a great place to be. So, and now that I've been here a year and a half now, now I understand why. So, this is what yeah. we're doing. So for both of you, since you're both coming from a different food 
areas. How does the South Shore food industry compare to other parts of the country, or in your case, Dan, other parts of the world? Are we better than Paris? Just like anywhere else, the South Shore is ultra competitive. I mean, we're, we're, as chefs, we became chefs because we weren't good at football or baseball or basketball, and we needed a competitive outlet. You know, that, that 10 minutes during the night where you've got more to do than you can get done drives every one of us. Um, the one thing I'll say is I've never had trouble staffing like we have on the South Shore the last couple of years. That's probably the biggest difference in the food scene. Um, you know, food's so diverse now, you can find what you want just about anywhere you go. You know, 20 years ago, you weren't finding sushi outside of a major city. Now, now it's in every strip mall you see across the country. So you can find good food anywhere you go. The staffing on the South Shore has been tough, but the competitive chefs are still the same. We're all competitive. We all want to be the best at what we do. Um, so I think you get that anywhere across the globe. Dave, how, how do we compare to other areas you've been in? Um, it's actually, it's, I, I believe it's a little more diverse out here than it is anywhere else. You get the, the clientele is totally different. It, it's it's a little better clientele, so I. Bet, better in what way? Um, just in, in in all general everything, right. just the, the friendliness, the 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 in, in interactions with with all our guests here. It's it's totally different. It's so different. Really. Yes. Y Yankees on the South Shore are all that friendly. Is that after the fishbowl tequila? <laughs> well, well, if you have two of them, it, it becomes a it becomes a great atmosphere. Yeah. <laughs> Not just that, you know, we're in one of the parts of the country, and there aren't a ton of them who embrace who they are. You know, we are on the South Shore, and people are proud to be from the South Shore, and they, they don't hold back. And you get to see their true colors in five minutes of meeting. There's not a lot of beat around the bush, which makes for some great interactions for a chef and a bartender. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. My fault. And Dan, the three years in Paris, were you uh, at a school there or working in a... It started as an externship. You do a... At New England Culinary, before they closed, you do a 90-day and a six-month externship. Um, I did my 90-day in New York City, and the chef I worked for there ended up moving to Paris. He took me over there for my externship, and then I just continued to work with him after graduation. Nice gig. Not bad. Not bad. Unfortunately, the only French I learned was to tell someone they're pretty and could I have another beer? <laughs> you know, if you can cook, that probably works. I can't yeah. cook, so I've never yeah. tried it. So <laughs> that's great. And we're going to, Dave, we're going to send Heather down this summer to uh, take you up on your challenge that uh, one person can't do that whole fishbowl. There it goes. I tell you what, you yeah, got to park it. We can we'll do sit it side by side. See. <laughs> Take it wherever it goes. Excellent. I can't wait. Just throw the rum swizzle right in there, and we'll, we'll see how it how it goes. Um, somebody Hold asked. Hold on one second. I did want to introduce our general manager, Michael. Great. Weiss. Thank you. That was a question. Yes. Thank you. Military veteran, served our country. Now he runs. Now he runs the troops here. Yes, he does. It's been a lot of fun. Right. Wonderful. Great team here. Great atmosphere. Come out to the beach this summer and see us. So, what, what is your name? Uh, Michael. Michael Wharton. Michael, great, thank you, Michael. Nice Michael, to meet you. What, what is your food industry background? A little bit of everything. I've done so hotels. How long we got? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've managed hotels, restaurants, conventions, Heinz Convention Center from Boston. You know, a little bit of everything. I like my hands and feet in a little bit of everything. So great experience. Um, I started, lived in Japan, been all over the world, ran restaurants for the United States it's, government, you know, all over the place. So. Yeah, so, so uh, that sounds like an army chef. You've been all over the world with the U.S. government. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, I was in the Navy, got out of the Navy. Uh, that's how I got into the beverage scene. From restaurants, they call them clubs over there, too. But, um, club Alliance was actually the third biggest military club in the world. That's how I got my feet wet into this. And from corporate restaurants to independents to hotels to convention centers. Uh, I live on the South Shore, so, I, you know, semi every time, so to speak. <laughs> So how, how do you compare the South Shore to other parts of the world that you've been in as far as um, food industry and... Um, uh, well, New England's, 
is unique in a sense that, you know, we love food here. And, you know, I've been all over Bermuda here, fresh seafoods here in New England. Um, and the people are different. It's, it's friendly, you know, the interaction between guests to customers to staff has been great. Um, and it's more family here. Other parts of the country, you know, everybody's a little bit different, um, different attitudes, whole nine yards. Uh, but here in New England, especially in South Shore, and I did Boston for a long time too, South Shore is more friendly. That's what I would say. Someone asked a question about how was going, getting through last year and moving into this year, how the pandemic and everything, how is that? Right here. <laughs> no, <laughs> it was a challenge, you know, it definitely yeah. was a challenge. Um, you know, you one day at a time, you keep going forward, keep fighting and you know, everybody wants to come out now. It's been a long year, you know, we just get through it. You know, you got to stay positive, keep going forward. Uh, that's my best advice. Absolutely. And do you take reservations or is it first come, first serve? Mixture of both, but we do take reservations. Okay. We all have we do have some limited seating because of the spacing you have to do. But um if you call ahead, we'll do our best to get you in and if we haven't had an issue really. Great. And I'm just curious as the jetty and the flats, what is the are the, are the menus the same? So if you're in Marshfield and here. Or yeah, or if you're yeah, in Hull, you can get right that, or is it? Right now, they're more similar than they've ever been. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we talked about the staffing struggles a little bit and with COVID and limited menus and limited availability of certain things. So right now there's probably a 75% crossover, um, which makes, makes it great for training and being able to move guys back and forth. Uh, our summer menu and our bar flyer menu will be less than 50% crossover. Okay, good to know. Yeah. Great, thank you. Any other questions? Hands up. I had a Hi, question Angela. and a half. Yep. Hi. Um, you mentioned that hiring has been a challenge. Are you hiring? And if so, what positions? Every position, Every position. in the place. Summer's coming. OK. I, I always use it. That the roaring 20s happened after the bubonic plague. And we are, we're set here for a, a pretty wide open year. So we're going to need all the bodies we can get. Thank you. Awesome. Anyone else? Okay. Well, um, thank you very much, Chef Dan. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Dave. I think um, this was really great. I love seeing all the like different men, like different things from the menu, being getting the whole view of the restaurant. It's always fun when every when each restaurant does something just a little bit different to make this a little bit different every experience. So um, I will get your gift cards for you. If you would like some more, thank you, Angela, um, feel free to just go on our website and register there or let me know and I can invoice you for that. And then I will just send you all the, um, send you the gift card next week and you should get it by the end of the week to use for the weekend. So um, if, it, if everyone's all set and doesn't have any other questions, then hey. oh, Kim, go ahead. Are you open seven days a week? Not currently. Uh, we're looking at mid-May, probably going to seven days a week. Uh, to be honest, we can't staff for seven days a week right now. We'd love to be open seven days. Right now, we're open for Mother's right Day. Day Sunday. Are you open on Mother's Day? Yes, yeah, and we're accepting reservations. We're doing oh, a special. Put me menu. in. We're doing <laughs> a braised lamb shank, uh, a roasted ham, lobster crepes, and red velvet pancakes and a uh, roasted beef tenderloin are going to be kind of our brunch specials that day. Nice. Yeah. Oh, that sounds awesome. delicious. I'll be we there. We can take a reservation right now if you'd like. <laughs> she, right. said, she said to do that. So Kim, so, Kim McDonald's. Is her how about that? How was how your seating do you, when you have like more than six people? So what we do is just space you. Um, Perfect. For, instance, for instance, in this room right here, if you had more than six people, we just get these two tables up front here, close enough to where it's acceptable and seat you there. So you'd, you'd still be in the same area. Um, we're not gonna set you a three and three, one upstairs, one down, something like that. We'll, we'll keep you as close as we can. All right, 10 for 11 o'clock on Mother's Day, I'm in. 10 for 11 o'clock on Mother's Day, it's Cynthia, right? Kim. Kim McDonald. Got it. We'll be Got there. It.
Mike is writing that down right now. that down right as we speak. Thank you. So Beautiful. what days are you open? What days so, are you open? Wednesday to Sunday. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we open at 4 o'clock, Saturday, 11 a.m., Sunday, 10 a.m. Um, we do a pretty good-sized brunch. Uh, we have a great brunch menu. They buy you the, the do-it-yourself mimosa tray on brunch. It's always a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, so 4 o'clock Wednesday to Friday, 11 on Saturday, 10 on Sunday. Excellent. Thank you so much. That was a lot of fun. Thank have a great weekend, that. everyone. Yes. Bye-bye. Perfect. Bye. Have, have a great one, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you very much. This was a ton of fun. <laughs>